The children uh, were having their first child. This is my son, John, and his wife, Catherine. And they were seeing their normal doctor, who was quite good, and they were doing normal ultrasounds. And they had some concerns about some minor issues along the way, but nothing that really was unsettling. And uh, towards the end, they became concerned about this, what they thought was an issue with size. And again, my son can tell you better than I can about this. And so they went and suggested they go into Eastern Virginia Medical School and have an ultrasound. Uh, Catherine was pregnant uh, close to term, I recall somewhere around 36 weeks or so. And uh, upon our evaluation, we noted that uh, the fetus uh, had a major congenital heart disease. Uh, specifically, the right side of the heart did not develop very well. And the artery that brings the blood to the lungs was really about almost one-fifth the size that it should be. Yeah, we were, we were quite fortunate to have come across him because when we started going through the next steps and asking uh, where the best place in the world to take care of this, there, there was no ego involved. He immediately recommended the course of action and uh, he happened to know the head pediatric cardiologist up at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Fifteen minutes later, uh, we were on the phone with that clinic and five hours later we were in Philadelphia. We stayed in touch with the team in Philadelphia and we worked collaboratively to ensure that Catherine has the best outcome possible. Happy to report the outcome was really great after surgery and support. It's a great story about having the expertise at Eastern Virginia Medical School and how it parlayed into something that matters deeply to my family and, uh, and how lucky we all are to have Eastern Virginia Medical School here. Academic medicine is expensive, and so is research. It is through EVMS that we are here, and it's through EVMS that many of the leading physicians in this community are here, whether they are trained here or they were recruited to EVMS. The health of this community is so much dependent on EVMS, and the health of this community has been bettered over the years because EVMS is here. They need a certain base level of funding that they can count on that gives them the ability to create these centers of excellence we were talking about earlier. Uh, that, and they'll collaborate with others. They won't do them by themselves, I'm sure. And, uh, and they'll figure out what this community most needs in terms of those centers of excellence and, and move from there. But you, it just costs money to do that. You know, to build out labs, you recruit a new doctor, he has to set up a new lab, buy equipment. He's gonna bring some graduate students or some PhDs with them, postdocs. It just costs money to set it up. But, you know, you can just look at how many doctors in this community participate on the adjunct faculty at Eastern Virginia Medical School and get a resounding vote of how the community feels about being updated. They wouldn't have a resource to update them and to participate academically if that school didn't exist. And there's no doubt, I, I, I must be honest, I was one of the few people in the early days that didn't believe this community could afford a medical school. And I've been wrong because the quality of care that's come out of it way more than justifies the cost that's been uh, built into it. And I think almost anyone who's informed about this would tell you the same thing. So there were a few of us in the business community that thought it was a large expense and worried about it, but it's, uh, it's turned out to be a huge asset to the community.